We've recently got some of the best, most exciting news on Doom Part 2 since, uh, you know, uh, it was announced just a few months ago that it's in personal production. It's going to be coming out later this year. So, um, basically, a costume designer revealed a bunch of information in an interview she did with Deadline.com. We're going to discuss those details. Please, if you enjoy my Dune content, subscribe. I've done several Dune videos in the past month or so. And also, if you go even further back, when the first Dune movie was about to come out, I did several... Um, Dune videos back then, but here's the thing, all the newer Dune videos are since I've actually read every single Dune book, but ultimately I've read all of the main series, and uh, I'm really excited for part two to come out. Alright, so in specific, the costume designer Jacqueline West, right, she's worked on several different movies, she worked on uh, one of my favorite movies, The Revenant, right, uh, she goes on to say that Dune part two was a lot more labor intensive than part one. We made a lot of the costumes, she said. In part two, you really dive into the different worlds of Dune. We see what the Emperor's world looks like. We go to his planet. We spend a lot of time on Gaiety Prime, the Harkonnen planet. We spend a lot of time in Stellan Skarsgård's world. Fade Rautha comes into this one. Uh, he's played by Austin Butler. And Jacqueline West said he does a pretty fabulous job in it. Um, she also says all the worlds get expanded. It was about creating three separate different looking worlds and also revisiting the Bene Gesserits, the age old ones with these costumes that almost look like Egyptian mummies. <laughs> I think it's visually stunning, the sets, the cinematography, and the concepts. Now when she says Egyptian money, mummies, um, the style that the Bene Gesserit has uh, for the Dune movie um, looks very like... I'd say, you know, Middle Eastern, Northern African attire because of the, uh, you know, the the time period that they're in is in the future. But also, you know, Frank Herbert was heavily inspired by uh, Lawrence of Arabia. Um, you know, uh, their fashion sense, I think, comes from uh, like sort of like an Arabian appearance because... Uh, I think when Frank was writing these books, he asked his father, who was like a professional linguist of sorts, he's like, what what uh, version, what language do you think we'd be speaking 10,000 years in the future from now? And I think in the conversation that Frank Herbert has with his father, uh, a form of Arabic was what was decided upon. So, you know, the language they're speaking, there's several different languages, but a lot of the phrases like quizat chatterak um like that's actually got a hebrew hebrew connotations to it um also you know muadib uh you know certain fremen words for desert and stuff those are all arabic inspired so i think that's what she's referring to when she said how the bini desert are going to be rocking costumes that look similar to uh egyptian mummies um what's really interesting is it she said we're gonna get to see uh the Harkonnen planet Gaty Prime. Now that's really, really exciting because Gaty Prime is um, not necessarily mysterious, but when Frank visits over there and we get the POV from Baron Harkonnen and uh, you know Piter de Vries and the Beast Raban and Fade Routh, when we get that POV, uh, it's described but not in great detail. That doesn't happen until some of the later books. Um, specifically, uh, what really excites me is that she said the worlds are going to all look distinct and different, right? So obviously we have Dune, Arrakis, uh, Seleucia Secundus, uh, Gaty Prime, right? Those are all really exciting uh, to get to see on screen. Now one thing of note is that Seleucia Secundus is actually a prison planet. Right, so one of the ways that the Emperor Shaddam V uh, was able to make this massive army that, or you know, they're known as the Sarudakar, right? We see them depicted on screen in the Dune movies as this badass fighting force that can't really be opposed. Like they beat up, they kill a large chunk of the Fremen, they obviously kill a bunch of the House Kaladin soldiers. So these dudes are a serious fighting force, and what Paul's going to end up doing is 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 sort of training the Fremen in the weirding way and teaching them to take out the Sauradikar. Now, one of the ways that the Emperor actually trains the Sauradikar is by depraving them of, well, everything. Seleucus Secundus is a prison planet. And it's kind of a secret. Um, you know, uh, obviously, Baron Harkonnen knows 
that the emperor has sort of enforced prison, and this is how he trains uh, his soldiers for the Sarodakar army. Like basically, Seleucus Secundus is this giant battleground, and the toughest and strongest prisoners are then turned into Sarodakar, the fighting force for Emperor Shaddam, right? Uh, so once that's kind of revealed, um, you also find out that the emperor planned on doing that with Dune. He was going to turn the Fremen into a fighting force and turn them into Sardaukar, basically. So obviously, Paul puts a stop to that. Now, what's really interesting is that we don't really have that much information about the actual, like, House Carino, so the Emperor Shaddam V, his house's ancestral homeworld, like, it's sort of like the uh, celestial capital, whatever. It's called Kaitan. Um, it was depicted in the Dune 1984 movie, but we don't really have that much information on it because ultimately, the big showdown um happens when emperor shaddam brings his forces on to iraq is thinking paul is dead and not realizing that it's he's about to die <laughs> like um ultimately uh you know it's kind of like it'll be interesting to see the way that the movie takes it i don't want to necessarily spoil too much but just know the final showdown actually happens on Arrakis um in the books and Basically, you know, the Emperor Shaddam is forced into having his daughter Irulan marry Paul Atreides, even though Paul Atreides is really in love with Chani, right? So Princess Irulan sort of becomes his wife, but they never sexually mate, and he's not in love with her at all. But that's ultimately how uh, Dune Part 2 will end, and that will be with Paul sitting the uh, giant emperor's chair. Um, ultimately, uh... I'm really excited for Dune Part 2. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you want some more Dune content, uh, check the link down below in the description or just go to YouTube and type in Sir Hunt's Dune. Thank you for watching.